Okay, so you're growing your woodworking or your handmade business and you're trying to find good employees. And no matter what you do, you can't seem to find that person that you know is gonna be there consistently, work hard, and represent your brand well. Well, in today's video, I wanna show you how to find good employees for your woodworking or your handmade business. Let's dive in. All right, well, welcome back as always. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for your attention. Those are two of your most valuable assets, and I don't take it lightly that you're spending that time with me and allowing me to pour into your life and pour into your business. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to find good employees for your business. The first thing to understand is to understand that it's hard to find good employees, right? It's not like somebody out there has this magic pill where they find all the great employees and you're the one that's screwing it up, right? Every single person that's trying to grow a business struggles with trying to find great employees. Listen, there's there's no magic bullet, there's no magic pill, there's no magic thing that I can even share or tell you today that means that you're gonna bat a thousand from this point on. Every single person that you interview is gonna be a star employee, you're gonna hire them, they're gonna perform inside of your business flawlessly. That's not the case, okay? So understand first that it's difficult to find great talent. A couple principles I want to run by you today in this video, and a couple just practical strategies. And so the first principle really is hiring slow and firing fast. When I talk about hiring slow, what I mean is that we really want to think through what role am I hiring for and what type of person, what character attributes, what skill sets, what mindsets are going to fit within that role accordingly. Let's say that you own an online jewelry company and you need somebody that's making handmade earrings by hand. What kind of character traits do they need to have? Well, they need to have extreme attention to detail. They need to have good dexterity with their hands. They need to be confident to sit in one place for a long period of time working on something, right? They need to be able to focus. So if these are some of the character traits that we're looking for, then what we need to do based off of that is that we need to ask those types of questions in our interviews and we need to state clearly what attributes they need to possess on our job descriptions when we're putting jobs on, let's say, Indeed.com or Monster.com or even on Facebook. When it comes to hiring slow, we want to be really thorough in regards to what are we asking, what kind of person can fill the role that we're asking to fill. We want to be really thorough with that. When it comes to that firing fast, there's a guy that I follow for business. You should definitely follow him. His name's Alex Hermosi. He is brilliant when it comes to business. One thing that he talks so much about is that you're going to know within 7 to 14 days if you have an A player or not. You typically can't develop a players quickly inside your business. Now, also keep in mind here, based on where you're at in your business, you're going to need different level of players. Like when you're just starting out, you just need help, right? As you start to scale, you need to move from C players to B players, right? But as you become a world-class organization or a world-class business and you're really trying to grow, you really need excellent people in order to do that. That's the great differentiator. Really the only difference in the size of businesses is the talent inside of those businesses, the ideas, the execution of those ideas inside of businesses. So talent is so important. So when it comes to firing fast, based on where you're at in your business, you need to know, does this person meet the qualifications and the standards for the job? Challenge that we all face, and a lot of people inside the woodworking space and the handmade business sectors face, is that we, a lot of us, love people, and we will make connections with people regardless of how much value they're bringing to our business, right? And so we won't fire somebody just because we like them. You're shooting your business in the foot by doing that. Not to say that you just need to run around firing somebody as soon as you feel like they're not inefficient. You know, you should absolutely absolutely lead them. You should absolutely coach them. You should absolutely try to take them to the next level. But if someone's repeatedly proven to you that they are not able to go to the next level, then they need to either find another seat on the bus or they need to get off the bus. So as we talk about hiring slow and firing fast, that's what we're talking about. So we want to hire based on a couple different things. So number one is we want to hire based on talent. We want to hire based on experience and we want to hire based on culture. How do they fit our business from a culture standpoint? Listen, there's nothing worse than hiring somebody that is super talented, super experienced, and they come in and they wreck your culture inside your business. I've experienced this. I've seen this happen time and time again in other businesses. You need a team that can work together. And this is really what separates solopreneurs from true entrepreneurs that are trying to build large companies and bigger businesses. And I'm not poo-pooing on solopreneurs. A lot of times that is an easier route to take, right? You have less to worry about. You have less overhead. You have less things to manage. And depending upon who you are, that's exactly what you need to be doing. I get it. If that's you, run your lane, do your thing. But if you are trying to grow, 
grow a larger company, you're trying to scale, you're trying to add employees, you have to step up in your leadership and you have to step up in your regards to the culture inside of your business. Now, I can say that I don't have a perfect culture inside of my businesses. There are always challenges that we face. What defines your culture is how you respond to the challenges that you face, right? If you think that you're gonna start a business and have a perfect culture because you have no problems, think again, you're always gonna have problems. So the culture is really how do we respond when things don't go our way? How do we respond when things fall apart, when systems break? And so you need to make sure that you hire based on culture. The other things that I wanted to mention are hire based on talent. Simply put, how talented is this person inside of the role that I'm gonna hire them for? And then lastly is experience. Have they done this before? And so anytime that you can hire somebody that has experience versus somebody that doesn't, and you don't have to pay them astronomically two, three, four times as much money, you need to go with that person that has experience because you're not gonna have to hold their hand for the first two, three, four, six weeks of their on the job training. And that's gonna allow you to move much quicker and focus on the things that you need to focus on as the owner of the business to really scale and continue to grow the company. Here are the last things that we need to look for in great employees. And we're gonna wrap this up is we wanna have an employee that has a can do attitude. There literally may not be anything worse than an employee that you're like, hey, I wanna roll out this new initiative or I wanna try this thing or I want us to build this thing or see how this works. And all they can do is shoot down your idea. They bring no solutions to the table. All they bring are problems and why something's not gonna work. Listen, it takes no energy and no effort to point out all the things that aren't working, right? Anybody that has eyes to see can see that. It takes no energy, no effort to shoot down ideas and say, well, we couldn't do that because of this. Or we couldn't do that because of this. It takes energy and it takes effort to say, I don't think that's gonna work, but what if we did this instead? What if we tried this? Or hey, I don't know if it'll work, but let's give it a go. Let's see if we can do it. You want an employee that has a can-do attitude that's willing to get in the trenches with you and work to help grow the company. Now, side note, you can't pay somebody nothing and expect them to have a can-do attitude. You can't pay somebody at the bottom of the barrel and expect them to give you a ton of initiative. Nobody is gonna care about your business as much as you care about your business. That's just the truth. No matter how much you pay them, no one's gonna sacrifice and care about your business unless they're your family as much as you care about your business, okay? So the second thing that we look for in great employees is flexibility. Somebody that's not so rigid in their plans or in what's going on that they can't adapt to changes. Because what is business? Business is nothing but a set and a series of changes over time. Things are changing all the time. And if you have rigid employees that can't adapt, can't move from this role to this role, or can't move from this task to this task, or can't drop what they're doing and work on this because it's actually the most pressing thing at the moment, then you're gonna have a really tough time leading that employee. And you need flexible employees. Now, in all fairness, you also need to work on creating systems inside your business so that you're not constantly throwing your people all over the place, ask them to be flexible 24 seven. You need to meet somewhere in the middle, okay? Number three is you want longevity in great employees. Now, this comes out especially in the interview and hiring processes. And so so when you're looking at people's resumes, if you get a resume from somebody and they have been in six different jobs in the last two to three years, okay, they have a track record of not staying somewhere. And what's gonna happen is you're most likely gonna get in that interview and they're gonna give you a really good reason why they didn't stay at those companies. Like it was somebody else's fault, someone was doing something shady, they didn't like the culture, whatever that might be. But honestly, that's a reflection of them. They might have been at bad businesses and some of those might have been bad. But the reality is, is that you want an employee that has a track record of staying somewhere for a long period of time because there's nothing worse than training somebody for a month and then them leaving and you having to do it all over again and then them leaving and then doing it all over again, right? You want to have somebody that you train them, they stay with you, you continue to lead them, continue to pour into them, continue to check on their families and see how they are. How can you support them? How can you encourage them? How can you pray for them, right? You want to be there more than just a, a boss. You want to be a leader inside of your business, but longevity is one of the signs of health with employees and if you can trust them with the long-term growth of your business. And then the the last thing that we're looking for in great employees is really just a willingness to learn, a willingness to get their hands dirty, a willingness to drive and push the needle with you. They have to have a strong work ethic and they have to be willing to learn new things. There's nothing worse than getting an employee that maybe has a ton of experience from where they're coming from and they come in and we identify that the experience that they're bringing isn't actually the best way to do it, but they're unwilling to learn anything new. And so you want to make sure that if you're hiring employees, you're thinking through each of these things. So we want to hire slow, want to fire fast. We want to hire based on talent, based on experience, and based on culture. And then we want somebody that has a can-do attitude. They're willing to be flexible. They have a track record of longevity at their jobs and then a willingness to learn. If this is you, if you're kind of considering making this first hire, you're probably in a really good place to start scaling up your business, scaling up the marketing, the sales, the structures, the systems inside of your woodworking or your handmade business. If that's the case, I want you to check out the links below. We've got links to our Handmade Hero Academy program. We also have links to our Woodworking Business Accelerator.
Accelerator Program. For those of you that have furniture woodworking businesses that are doing anywhere from three to 10,000 a month that are ready to scale. So with that being said, I love you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.